So, a new version of Map Tools has been released. We're now on to Map Tool version 1.6.1. And let's have a look and see what's changed. There's been some uh, additions. The new version now supports dialog and frames for HTML5. Uh, they've simplified the token visual blocking and they've now added a movement blocking layer. Um, they've also added look and feel themes so now you can change the themes the way it looks and there's a few other things there you can see on the screen. I haven't upgraded to 1.6.1 yet uh, before I do that I'm just going to go through the game that I ran the other day and when you use map tool um, as you saw in my previous video, you can just put some maps down, some tokens, and roll some dice. But what MapTool does is there's something called frameworks. Basically, frameworks are somebody else's settings they've designed for a particular rule system, and they export their game without the maps and without the tokens, usually with all the macros done and stuff like that. That is really for the game in question. So if you're looking to play 5e for example there are a number of 5e frameworks, campaign frameworks you can look and you can look at the campaign frameworks and the one that I've been using is Malik's simple 5e framework which you can download from the forums at RP Tools and there's instructions on how to install the framework and basically you download a file and some macros and save it to your system. Now this system also uses the Bob files tokens. And these are drop-in D&D 5e tokens for map tool and if you look at Melek's link he'll tell you how to download these and I'll show you now as we look over the campaign framework. So when you download the campaign framework you start off with this screen here. It's got a, a library token and this library token allows you to have all these macros on the right hand side. Now to load this once you've saved it to your machine you want to file open a campaign and you load the 5e framework by Malik. So I've downloaded the framework and then we've got some maps that I've set up for my Lost Minds of Fandelva game and if we look to the right hand side here you can see the way I've numbered it. The way maps work is they work in alphabetical order so if you put numbers in them you can order them in the right way. So as you can see I've put the them in order here starting with 0.0, .0 going up to 99 to whiteboard. I like to have a whiteboard at the end so that if there's any situations that uh, that come up in the game and I need to draw a quick map then I can just take them to a blank screen and I can draw this blank screen so that and I put that at the end as 99 as a whiteboard it was actually a grass board but the library screen you hide that from the players the way the libraries work is they are tokens with macros attached to them if I click on this macro now on the object layer and switch to selection on the right hand side here you can see these are all the macros that are attached to this library token and the macros can be referred to from other windows back to this one and the way this one's been set up all the work has been done for me it's all set up so the next one I've got up is what we call the theatre and the theatre is basically it's a star map with my player character tokens on it so I can store them here and they're always in the right place. So these are the five my five characters that we've got for the campaign I'm running and I'll pick one of them and click on the token as you hover over you can see that the level the HD used the speed HP and armor class it all comes up on the screen and if I double click this token now this will take me to the edit token. So I've got as a name, I've got the character's name. It's set to PC. The GM name, I put the player's name so that I know which character it is when I hover over it. I know that Mark is playing Turing, so there's no ambiguities for me. 
this is the property screen and this is where the meat and potatoes are of the character this contains their stats and it's you can see things like this speed hp max hp these are all stored in this token so that when we use the buttons later they can all be referenced vbl i've got nothing set up in vbl states these are all these states that the have been set up in the game and we can have health bars as well ownership that's who's got access to the player token so that when that person connects they can move that around and the token has been set to circle properties is basic and that's these properties over here this is the basic setting you can have multiple settings for that and this one has sight he's got dark vision and if we look up at the map campaign properties this is where we set everything for this game so the basic token type this is all the fields that we've got again it's all set up site these are the site in the game so we've got a uh, blind with a distance if you've got low light division that's the the range normal vision dark vision that's all set up all the light has been preset as well so we've got auras that we can pick from we've got the d20 um, light so we've got lamps candles hooded lanterns and we've got some generic and some personal items all preset up states these are all these states that you can attach to the characters and you can see there's the preloaded and basically when you pick one of these states it will input a token over the top of your character and finally we've got the health bars the solid health bars that come with the game but uh, i've put these gradient health bars in which um, show the health from zero up to 100 percent the way the characters work is that if you want to import a a new um, character if we go now and go to the library and let's pick a token uh, we'll pick one of these tokens here and we'll drag it across and we'll make that a pc so we'll call this john call it a pc and it's visible to players okay so now we've got this token on as you'll see when we open it everything is set to the initial but there's no stats in there so what we do now is we go over to the campaign setting and with the player selected we click configure token and this is where you put in all the details so we've got the character name so we can as i put it in john john is already there the pronoun is it going to be female male or engendered and that's for some of the macros we'll pick it up so it's i'm going to say it's a male character race is human his class is a fighter and then as a fighter you pick this hit dice so it's going to be first level so we put one on there click ok then this is the point where you put your attributes in so we'll say that john has a strength of 15 dexterity of 12 constitution of 14 he's not very intelligent 8 his wisdom is 13 and his charisma is 10. put all those details in click ok and now you select your sleeping throw proficiency so we'll say that he's got strength and constitution click ok and this is your skill proficiencies so if they're untrained you mark a zero on it if they're proficient you put a one and if they're expert you put a two so we'll say that he's got expertise in investigation and intimidation click ok and all this is doing is putting all the stats onto the token properties so we'll say his armor class is 15 speed is 30 foot he's got one from his decks already for initiative there's no bonus initiative and we'll say his hit points are 12 with his maximum hit points are 12 and we'll click ok and now when you hover over you can see on screen there's all john's stats so the next thing we need to do now is if we click on him and click selection you can see that they got no we've got no macros for john at all so what we need to do now is we need to import the macros so if we right click import macro set then we're going to go up to our users 
and we're going to find all his macro sets. So we go to Map Tools 5e, and then we got the simple 5e token macro set. So click on open, and this should. There we go. So now this has imported all the token, the macros for the selected token. So if we look from top to bottom, the character now has some dice to roll up the top. They can take damage, heal damage, short rest, long rest, roll initiative. They have some different actions they can take here. They've got the weapons. Now these are incorrect. The moment it always sets up to unarmed attack unarmed damage and if we click on the unarmed attack you can see now the window that john makes an unarmed attack stroke nine and this is taking his d20 plus his proficiency plus his strength modifier which is five is plus two plus two and that's giving a total of nine so it's taking the proficiencies and the strength modifier that we set up when we set up the token and it's rolling it all for us if he hits then we can roll the unarmed damage and again, it will deal three damage with an arm strike. If we hover over the three, you can see it's picking up a roll of one plus a strength modifier of two. So what we need to do now is we need to set up any other additional weapons that the character has. So with it selected, we go to the campaign setting and we can create an attack and damage action set. So if we click this, we'll say that he's using a long sword. We now change the text. So strikes with his long sword, we could say slashes with his long sword if we wanted to. And we, and we change that to long sword. It's the attack roll is 20 plus proficiency and strength modifier. If this was a ranged weapon, we'd change that to DEX mod and then strike before damage. Text before the damage is deals. It's a 1d8 plus strength modifier, so we change that. And we'll call this slashing damage. And then we have a choice of an action, bonus action, a reaction. And all that uh, radio buttons does is change the color of the button that's going to be over here. And we click OK. So now when we go back to our... You can see that... I've used put the long sword in, but this time I put it with the capital O, and this is the button I've created. And you can see I changed strikes to slashes. It's picking up the person, the long sword, and it creates a second button over here and deals slashing damage. So now when I roll it, you can see John deals six slashing damage. Okay, so we can set up our, our weapons here. If we want to set up a spell or something like that, we use the create simple wide action. And here's uh, an example here of setup. You put the action name in the top, the action text, the calculation. So all you do is change if you've got proficiency, um, any modifier, the text after the roll, second roll calculation, and final text. And we'll take the default, click OK. And now when we go back to our, our character, you can see now he's got a long action called Change Self. When I click on that, it gives you the text and makes any rolls. And what you can do is if you want to change that, edit it. And quite often I will just put the uh, default token and then I will just change the text in here to read what I want. So if you want to make any... Um, rolls against the attributes then this is already predefined so if I want to make a strength strength saving roll I roll that it appears in the chat and you can see over it if I hover over it it's adding my strength modifier and the proficiency as I got proficiency strength but if I roll wisdom which I've got no proficiency in you can see it's just adding um, my normal roll with no proficiency at all because it's plus two times by zero so that's a zero so that's all calculated for you same with your skill checks when you make a skill check you make a perception roll you just roll perception it will make the perception roll 
and if you've got proficiency, you'll add it. And I chose investigation, so if we choose investigation, you can see now that it's adding the proficiency. So that's two times one, so there we go. So all of these buttons are here for the players. When it's uh, time to roll initiative, you ask them to click the roll initiative button, and this will then feed into the left hand side here and will roll the figures here, and I'll show you that in a minute. So, for example, if I wanted to add all of the characters here to the initiative, I could click Add to Initiative. They're all here. And I say to the players, Roll for Initiative. So John will roll his initiative. And then the initiative roll is made, and each player would get added to there. You can sort them in initiative order. So, for example, if this one here rolled initiative, you can see now that has appeared sort them and then when you click next it'll tick the first one and it will appear in the chat here that who's received initiative and then you tell the player to take their turn so it's john's turn so he can move his token he can do attacks if you wanted to do one of these other actions here you could click on it so say he wants to dodge you click dodge and it tells you what's happening um, with the dodge he uses his dodge attacking and it gives you all the benefits of that. Same if you want to search, you click on the search button. They use the search action, G will ask you to roll perception or investigation. So it's nice that it's uh, some simple um, actions in here are already on there. When the player has finished their turn, if they click the end turn button, it will then move on to the next player who will then have initiative and they will take their action and you can see on, on this one this person has taken their action already so there's a, a state on it so let's just clear that so any states that the players take will appear on here and i'll show you that from the gm screen so if we have john on the gm screen i can say that uh, this person has been stunned click on stunned and it will put a stunned status over the top and it tells them in here that the, the player is stunned and what that means. So it's, it's all baked in there for you. Go back to the selection. If a character takes damage, uh, all you do is tell them they take damage. They click on the take damage button. And if we see, if we hover over that John has got 12 out of 12 points. So you say, tell you takes four damage. He clicks the takes damage puts in four and now when you hover over it you can see that um, the character has now reduced to eight hit points and on these characters here when they take damage as you see the health bar will drop down i've not assigned the health bar to this one yet same for healing damage if they take a potion or a character heals them tell them to click on the heal damage and how many points they've taken and it won't take them of the maximum and it'll heal them back up same with the short rest and long rest. The buttons are here as well when they take a short rest and it'll tell them what to do. And you can see with this character, I've set up um, their, so some of their spells and I've colored the spells. So for example, Cure Wounds, this character clicks Cure Wounds. The creature you gain is getting four hit points and it's taking the, the D8 plus their Wisdom modifier and making the calculations so it's nice and easy for the players to it's all be done so it's nice and simple so that is all for the characters so let's delete this character and then we set up these scenes so the first scene i've got this is the lost mines of Fandelva. so i've got an area map so i can show the characters from the outset where they're going and by holding on the token layer, if you hold the plus button, the sorry, the plus button, the space bar, it will give you a pointer. So you can tell your players, and the players can also do this, that you're starting off in Neverwinter and you're taking the road south. So you can tell them what's going on, and they've got an idea. So that was the first step for Fandelver. Um, then we go on to the high road, which is the ambush. Now we've got these characters here, these tokens here, but if I go to player view. You can see that they're hidden. They're on the hidden layer. And there's two, there's two ways you can do this um, with this framework. You can have them on the hidden layer, or if you 
don't have them in the hidden layer. The way I set it up on the day was I switched them to the token layer. So I changed this to the token layer. So now I can't click on it because it's on the token layer. And then when it's on the token layer, each character that was on there, on the campaign, I made them invisible. So it put a symbol on there, letting them invisible. And then when I go to the player screen now, even though it's on the token layer, you can see on the player's view, it wouldn't appear. So that invisible was a really good way to set them all up and I knew who had been seen and who hadn't been seen. And then when it didn't, I wanted them to show, all I do was click the invisible again and it remove the invisible. If you notice over here on the left hand side, it says creature two appears and that's because all the um, tokens I've got on here, I've called them creature. The GM name is different so I know what they are, but for the players it just says creature so they don't know what they're facing. Now the beauty of the Bob's Files tokens is if you want to import a, a monster um, that is on this list here. If we go to tokens, so I've got the monsters. And here is the monsters and these are the ones that are in the SRD. So let's say we wanted to bring in a net in. All you do is we drag it onto the screen, drop it on the token layer, NPC. It creates the creature name. I've got it set to random and a random number. So creature 222 is coming on and it sets it to the appropriate size for the grid. In the preferences, to set this up, what you need to do is on tokens, a new token, change that from file name to creature and duplicate token numbering, choose random and show the numbering on the name. You can add name, GM name or both. So there is the creature and because it's all been set up with the library token, if we go to selection now, you can see all these creatures are preset pre with all of their weapons and all of their details. And if you click on sheet, you'll see that it brings up the character sheet as well. So this has all been pre-done by Bob. It's absolutely fantastic. So let's just get rid of this one now. I'll delete that because it's not in the game. So that's how you bring your monsters in. If there's, the monsters aren't in this list that you get from Bob's tokens, then what uh, I did, I had a wolf. I got the closest one that I could and then I added to the token, um, the stats, because just the same way as we have the stats for the players, we have the stats for the monsters. And if you double click the token, you can see the properties here and the properties have been set up so you can alter them as well if you wanted to do that but it's already been pre-done for you so but the two the stats have all been done for you if you do a check me roll it'll roll all the abilities so you can do all the ability checks if you do the save me roll it will do the ability saving throws and do all them so if you need to make a strength roll Click on the button and roll all of them and you just look at the one you want, which is really good. And by default, this is not set up to show to the players. It's been set up that only the GM uh, can see it. And when I first used this, I had to tell the players what um, was rolling. I have found out now how to switch this off. If you go back to the library, click on the object layer, click on the library token and then on NPC attack right click and edit scroll all the way to the bottom you'll see here at the bottom here is this A5E output HTML so that is going to output it all but it's only going to output it to the GM this won't appear on the player screen so to change this all you need to do is put a comma inverted commas all close inverted commas Click apply and OK. And you need to do the same for the save me and for the check me boxes as well. Otherwise those won't appear on the player screen. 
So if I go back now to my goblin map. Now when I roll an attack with the, the scimitar or the short bow, this will now appear on the player's screen. Um, the thing I might do is just change this here from goblins attacks to creature attacks. Um, I haven't done that yet, but that's certainly something that uh, I will look at. And it gives the players can see what the attack roll is, what the advantage and disadvantage rolls would be. So it rolled two rolls, made a 23 and a 10. The damage is seven, and it's telling you how we got to that, and it's slashing damage. So that's a, a, a good way to do the rolls. It's all calculated for you. The goblin here also has a nimble escape. So if I click on that, It'll tell me nimble escape. The goblin can take the disengage or hide action as a bonus action on each of its turns. So any spells or anything like that has all been pre-added there as well. So I've set up the vision, um, vision blocking. And the way I've done this is once I've imported the map to the background layer, go up to the vision blocking layer. And you can see I put, I've dragged out vision blocking around the outside. And the way you do this is if you click the first button here and you can click and drag click first restart click again and that will put a vision blocking on won't be seen on the layer but now as players i've got it set up that you can see what they can see i put something here now so that's why that is is blocking to, to get rid of it all i do is left click again hold the shift key down and you'll see the box now changes to white and i can edit that out and the way i did it for the trees was i used the x the blue x i put x on the big trees so what this has the effect of doing is as the players move they can see through the trees but not all the way through so the trees cause, cause blocking what i've also done is i put an information marker here on the object layer and when the players click on that it overlays a dead horse two dead horses each has several black feather arrows sticking out of it so the players can click on that one because i've made it player visible so that was the first map i did nice and simple gets them into the game if I move on to the next map I did, which is a lot more complicated, and this is the hideout from Lost Craigmore hideout. And as you can, if I can switch on the vision blocking layer now, you can see all the blocking I've had to do to work. So anything in blue on here now is the players can't see. I've also got some X's down here for the trees as well to hide all that. So as the players move into the complex it's all set up so if I switch to a player view now zoom in you can see now with the players as he moves that is his line of vision that will appear on the player's screen I don't think it will work on here now it's just player no you have to be set up with the um, fog of war and fog of war is off there we go that is the player's view so that's what the player would see as they're coming from here you can see he's got dark vision and the areas they can see and that works really well as they're moving around you can see now the players can also measure as well there's a tape measure up here and they can if they're not sure they can measure somewhere so oh, how far is that? And it will calculate it for them. So that works really well. Um, as the GM, let's switch the fog of war off. I've also put some notes on the screen as well. So if I switch off play view, you can see these little the fog of wolf you can see these little tokens i've clicked on these are on the object layer but they if i click on them on the object layer and click on them double click you can see what i've done is in the notes section i put a title as an npc 
the font size just increases the size. The notes at the top here, as if I made it visible to players, that they could see the top bit. But um, and the GM notes are in the bottom. But the way I've got it set up is the config. Um, it's not visible to players, so they can't see it. It doesn't appear on their screen at all. And as you see, if I go show us player, it doesn't show at all. If they click there, nothing happens. But for me, I can click on that when I'm on the token layer and the pop-up will show me the text. So some nice, easy notes I'm going to refer to my book. Same up here, I can click on that and you can, what I tend to do is anything in the top is what I read to the players. GM notes is stuff just for my information. And then you can run the combat from there. So again, if I click on the tokens here you can see the wolf he got set up for his bite there's the capture sheet for the wolf with his armor class uh, hit points at zero because he's been killed i uh, just uh, oh let me show you what happens when it's killed so normally these will be on the token layer so if i click this set it to the token layer and let's heal the npc let's take him back to maximum hit points I don't know what it's going to be, but if I hover over him now, take him back to the object though, the, uh, change him to the token there, there we go. So now when I hover over him, I think it's because his state has been set. There we go. So there he is, he's got 11 out of 11 hit points. So when an NPC takes damage, player makes his roll tells you how much damage you've done you click on that and the wolf takes four damage take it again it takes more damage that's takes it takes nine damage okay alert wolf has instantly died nine damage so now we've damaged all we need to do is click on npc dead that will put a kill token over them and it moves the token from the token layer to the object layer so now when I'm on the token layer, I can move this wolf, but this one I can't move because it's moved to the object layer and it just leaves it as a dead token for the players. So that's really good as well. Um, there's some other states down the bottom here, but as you can see from these, it's all work's been done. What I, The way I like to set it up, I like to have initiative in the top left. I have my chat down here and underneath here I've got some tables that I use and this is basically a dice roll which is these dice here and I've got my connection so I can see who's connected to a game. Um, the way the dice rolls here works is in the table. If I open up a d4 table, let's open that up. So basically that's the name of the table and in the table on the, when a one is rolled for, it'll show this image. I could have text in there, and those are my four dice rolls. So all I do now in chat is when I roll a d4 or d8, I click on the button and it rolls a d8, picks the image for that number and displays it. So that's a nice easy way of doing some dice rolls that aren't in game. And I've also set up a d100, so that rolls two d10s. And the final one is if I want to roll a dice with a modifier, I can pick a dice type. I'm rolling two, d6, proficiency of one, modifier of two, roll that, and that will do the roll for me. So I can do any dice roll that I want to there from d4 to d100. So roll one d100, I can also do it that way as well. So and that's in my global, so that transports across to all of my different games the when it comes to players when they die it's also built in that they can make their death saves and all count the three saves and three fails and if a player dies which i have not had yet as i can click the player dead token and that will give it the death of that token so you can see there's a lot of work being done here by Merrick. It made uh, the job for, as a GM really good for me. 
um, all these stats are there and I've got the players to roll for their initiative and make sure they end their turn and then it activates the next player and it certainly did speed it up I was really impressed with the with the whole thing um, so that's the framework for simple 5e uh, are the frameworks that are there available and even if you don't use the all of the framework you can all of the macros here if you right click them and click edit it tells you how they've written the macro and uh, you can cobble together so copy this and use it in your own macros or change the tokens uh, change the conditions and uh, get some really good ideas so Maddox one is the one I chose to use because it was as he said on the web page it's a nice simple way of doing it there are other 5e frameworks um, available you have to use the creations um, you can have a look at those and what I suggest you do is download um, let's go to the campaigns frameworks here <clears throat> And then we have the 5e frameworks. So I'll give you some more. Uh, a recent one uh, is Rod's d, d 5e framework. Uh, another one by Pulse Straight. So what I would say is have a look at these. Download two or three of them for the system you want to play. Try them out and see which one suits you. For me, the simple one was the one that I liked. Um, it, it kept it simple. Some of these other ones had features in it which I didn't really need um, and I think maybe some of them as you get more experience with map tool will probably be better as well it gives you more features but as I didn't understand uh, I, I'm not really good at writing macros at this time I'm, I'm still learning I thought take something nice and simple and uh, start with that so that's a nice simple way to use the frameworks in the map tool basically the, it's just as I said it's um, somebody's done all the hard work for you and you might find that uh, some of the uh, bits and pieces don't work um, so play around with it and as long as you uh, keep the original file somewhere you can always go back to it um, so uh, there is no official frameworks it's a fan based system so all of these have been written by fans of the systems there's no official 5e or pathfinder or or, or or anything like that they don't support official frameworks or it's all done by the fans and if you head over to the forums or to the discord you find that the developers are still really active and you can ask them questions um, as I did uh, with uh, Melik's simple 5e framework I asked him some questions and to be fair he got straight back and he's asked me for um, some views on the framework and how it worked so uh, it's nice to get some uh, feedback from it so I think that's it all for now uh, I am hope you, that you enjoyed that uh, little walkthrough and uh, I'll see you again soon.